welcome back to another All Heart video. Today we are going to be talking about how to present Montessori activities to toddlers into five main areas. I know that we touched base a little bit about this in our last Montessori with Heart video. So I wanted to basically kind of go through the motions of how to set up these different areas. Toddlers need activities that help them build upon those fundamental skills that they need to use their hands. They need activities that will help them with their hand-to-eye coordination, their hand-to-hand -hand transfer, their gross motor skills, their creativity, their language, their self-expression. So the five different activities that we want to be able to set up for our little ones to build upon all of these skills are, one, they need activities to work on their hand and eye coordination, two, activities for music and movement, three, they need activities to build upon those practical life and fundamental skills, they also need arts and crafts in order to help with their self-expression, creativity, imagination. And the fifth one would be language. So I'm gonna go ahead and kind of take you step-by-step, step, show you just a few examples of how to set up each. And hopefully that will give you a better idea of how to set up these different types of stations and activities and trays for your child at home. So if you guys are ready, let's go ahead and get started. So let's start off with the very first one, and that would be activities that would help them work with their hand and eye coordination. Let's go ahead and go over to the shelf and I will show you what I have. So this would be the perfect activity to help in building their hand and eye coordination. Um, and I like this one because it's not just them having to pull the string through, which sometimes could be a little bit difficult because it won't stay straight and it is a little bit flimsy. So having something like this that's got the wooden dowel at the end makes it a lot easier for them to be able to string it through all the way. So the next hand and eye activity would be a puzzle. And there's so many puzzles for you to choose from. Now just keep in mind that if you are strictly sticking to Montessori, then try and choose puzzles that have a realistic picture of things that they would see in the real world. So in this case, I chose all of the farm animals because she absolutely loves farm animals. And that way she's able to identify each and then be able to fit the corresponding little puzzle piece into the corresponding slot. So all I did was remove all of the pieces. I placed them inside of this small little um, cotton basket. And that way it's easier for her to just kind of pick and choose which one she wants to work on and then she can put them in the corresponding slot. Now another really wonderful activity is an activity that uses something like this. So these are like little wooden tongs and these are perfect for developing that little pincher motion with her fingers. It's going to strengthen a lot of their hand uh, motion and here she's able to pick up the little corresponding felt ball and place it in the corresponding slot. So again, she's not just learning that you know, pincer movement, that hand and eye coordination. But she, like I said, she is learning other things in this activity. But again, I am primarily focusing on the fact that she is strengthening those hand muscles. So the next area I have is an area for music and movement. And this is perhaps one of my favorite areas. And because we have a larger space, we have been able to dedicate like an entire little section just to their music and movement. So if you do happen to have a smaller space, which is incredibly common, of course, then all I would suggest is making sure that you place um, a few different instruments in perhaps a tray or a basket and just place that on their shelf. It's as simple as that. And if you have even younger babies that are perhaps just a couple of months old, then rattles are the perfect introductory musical instrument for them. It's something that they can easily hold in their hand. And as they get older, you can start introducing things that would perhaps require just a little bit more skill. But let me go ahead and show you our music and movement area. 
So this is our music area and it's just here in the corner of our space as soon as we come in. So we do have our piano here and my son was taking piano lessons before the pandemic hit. Um, so now we're just trying to work on things online for him to continue to progress and learn. But we have that there. And then just over here on the side on this bench is where I have the rest of their little instruments. And like I said, all you have to do is just place a couple of instruments in a basket for them to use. Just make sure that they are out in the open and they will definitely gravitate towards it. On the side here, we have their little drum, and I could have just placed all of the instruments inside the drum, but then I feel like they're a little bit obscure and just kind of hidden from sight, so placing them out in the basket really did help, and then they have their little accordion right there. So in the back where I usually have all of my son's costumes, I do keep this basket right here, and it's just on this little bench. And inside we have this really beautiful jump rope with the wooden handles. And these are just little bunnies. I just thought they were so cute. And my son has been learning how to jump rope. So we made sure to get him something like that. But I just keep it in that little pouch in the basket whenever he is feeling like he wants to use it. And this is what I had wrapped in there. So this is just a hopscotch mat. And this is perfect for them to kind of let out a lot of that excitement. It's, it teaches them about, you know, balance and coordination. And it also has the numbers here. So number recognition, I remember playing this so much when I was a kid. But um, just keeping something like this is nice and simple. I just keep it in a basket so that they can pull it out whenever they want to um, move around and play. And the last thing are is have. our Pickler Triangle. So we got this for my daughter when she turned one and it was absolutely her favorite thing. And to this day, my son, even though he is five and my daughter is two, they both use this every single time that we are in here. So it's definitely worth the investment and they are able to learn how to climb. So if you've got your little toddlers that are just ready to climb on anything, this is the safest thing to give them to learn how to climb. So the next area of activities that we wanna set up are practical life activities. Now I have set up a lot of practical life activities throughout my home. And if you haven't seen that one, How We Montessori at Home, I'll go ahead and leave that linked in the description down below. But as far as practical life activities in our playroom, let me go ahead and show you a few that we have. Now, we, I do have an area set up that is just for practical life activities, pretend play, and I do have a designated space just for that. And then I have another smaller area, which is a lot more hands-on and more realistic practical life activities that they can use and they can learn and apply in daily life. Now we set up practical life activities in order for children to be able to learn how to take care of themselves, how to take care of others, and how to take care of their surrounding environment. So through these practical life activities, they are learning everyday skills such as pouring, scooping, tying, or cleaning. This is not only going to help them with their confidence and their self-esteem, but it's also going to help them refine those fine motor skills. So let me go ahead and show you how I've set up those two areas and hopefully that'll give you uh, a few ideas of things that you can set up either in your home or in your playroom. So when we walk into the playroom over towards the left side, I do have this little bench set up for them. Now, usually on this side, I keep the water dispenser for them so that if they're thirsty, I just removed it because I was cleaning it out and filling it up with fresh water for them. But I will always keep water in here and that way they can pour water into this small little basin and they can either wash their hands or if they're painting, they can wash their little paint brushes. They've got hand sanitizer there, and I always keep a Kleenex box as well, but we're out, so I need to go purchase a fresh box. But down below, I have another pouring activity, so I will keep water in here, 
they're able to pour water into each of these glasses. So again, just displaying things in a tray will make it nice and clean and there won't be any messes on the floor because they utilize the entire tray. And I also have this here in order for them to kind of work on that pulling and pushing motion when they're distributing water back and forth. And kids just love to play with water. So just having a small setup like this would be perfect for them to work on those practical life skills. Now over here on the side, I have a set of towels. Now I went ahead and just made these myself. I know that there are some that they sell, but you can just make this yourself and it's a perfect folding activity. So all you do is draw, mark a line where they would have to fold. And you guys, I'm not kidding when I say that kids love being able to use this and fold on their own. So you would just draw the line on the fold. So they would fold here, then they would fold here. And then since there were two marks so that they don't get confused, I did write a number one here so that they know that this is the first step and that this would be the final step and they would have a little folded towel. Now I have different examples of folds, as you can see. Just like that. So each of them has a line and they, they're just able to kind of follow through so that they can work on developing all of these different types of folds. And I just keep this here in this little basket underneath their little wash basin for them to use. And I do have another activity as well, but I'll go ahead and show you that one when I do our updated room tour. So the one thing that you wanna remember when you're setting up their play spaces, especially for practical life activities, is just making sure that everything is at their level. And this goes for anything in Montessori. You want to get things that are child size, things that are appropriate for them to use, that are safe for them to use. Just having everything at the ready so that when their curiosity kind of strikes, they are free to move about the room and work on whatever they want to work on. So this is our like practical life pretend play setup. And what I like about these is that we do have quite a few vegetables that they are able to learn how to chop in half. And I believe a lot of these are like Melissa and Doug. Um, I think we do have another brand. Um, I'll go ahead and link that down below. But being able to cut uh, vegetables is absolutely perfect for them to use being able for them to use these little pots and pans because they, like I said, children do love to mimic everything that you do. So, and here inside this is where we keep all of their little utensils and their little wooden play knives so that they learn how to kind of chop those vegetables. But we do have an area like this set up for them. And then on the side, we do have their little fridge and their little Melissa and Doug cleaning supplies. So whenever they want to dust or if they want to help pick up anything, if they want to help sweep, everything is readily available for them to use. So the next area that I have is an area for all of their arts and their crafts. Now I have been reworking the space and I will go ahead and show you the entire space very, very soon. But I did want to at least show you how to present that art activity on a shelf and that way they can have all of the tools that they need in order to work on that specific art activity. Make sure that if it is an art activity that they have everything that they are going to need in order to finish that activity as a whole. So let's say I'm presenting a watercolor activity. I will have watercolored paper. I will have their paintbrush. I would have a little tray where I would pour just a little bit of water and just remember you just wanna pour enough that they're able to, you know, have enough to kind of remove the paint off their brush, but not so much that they're going to completely spill everything. I also have their little apron. And then I have a little rag in case there is a spill. And then I have their little watercolor paints there. So this is everything that they would need to complete this little painting activity. 
Now, if you just have like a simple cutting activity, then uh, I would just suggest using a smaller tray. All of my trays are being used at the moment, so let's just say that this was smaller, but I would use a smaller tray. I would have the paper that they're going to cut and child size safe scissors for them, and that way they are able to cut it into the shape that they want. Now, there are pre-lined um, cutting activity papers that you could also use. I like to just use this, and that way they can kind of cut however they want. Um, and then I also have my son kind of draw out the lines or kind of do folds of where they would want the lines to be cut. Same thing would go if they just want to do an art activity where they want to draw and then perhaps cut. I would put the scissors inside a little tray and then I would have their little uh, colored pencils out on the side um, for them to choose from. So whatever type of activity they're interested in when it comes to art, just laying them out on a tray, making sure that you have all of the supplies there for them ready to use. That way they can just pick up the entire tray and everything that they need is there and easily accessible for them. That's really what you want to go ahead and focus on. So the very last activity would be language activities. And I have a few different areas set up for my children in order for them to develop all of those language skills. With language activities, not only are they learning to identify certain objects, but this is helping in preparation for them to learn uh, phonetics and to learn to eventually read. So these are activities that are so incredibly important into their development of language. So let me go ahead and show you a few examples of those. So we do have this magnetic blackboard over here in our reading area, and I've just set it up on this blackboard with all of the different words because this is a subject that we are working on currently. So it's got all of the names of the different bone parts and everything is just very, very clear and everything is titled in order for him to learn all of these different words. We do have a reading corner in this section and I've just got a few of their favorite books here on the shelf. And then just make sure that wherever you are setting up their little reading area, and it doesn't have to be as big as this, it could just be a small shelf with just two or three books. And then just make sure that they have like a little cozy area for them to sit and enjoy that reading time on their own. So I have this beanbag sofa just because the space allows for something that's a little bit bigger, but most definitely do not need something this big. So just having like a little area with a few pillows and a few of their books is perfect for them. Puzzles are again a great way to introduce language to a child. So if you have something like this in order for them to learn their letters, this is something that they can you know, easily hold and grasp. They're able to fit them in the appropriate slot and it's just having something tangible like this for them to actually hold is really allowing them to engage with the material that you are presenting. So puzzles are just a great way to be able to introduce all of these different um, language skills. And it's just a fun and easy activity that you are able to set up. And there's just so many different things that you can use in order to promote language. One of my favorite things are, of course, the Holtz Tiger animals. They are interacting with open-ended materials. They were able to kind of mimic what all of the animals are able to do. They're able to present them with a different, you know, storytelling activities. And it's just such a wonderful and fun way for them to be able to learn about all of these different animals and animals that, you know, that they would see in nature now, going back on what my son is learning, again, I have introduced some puzzles based on the activities that we're working on. And right now we are working on learning all about the human body, bones and muscles and tissues and the functions of the human body. So having something like this, which is just a little, um, little tray, I've got the corresponding little cards and then the corresponding 
little figures. So this is perfect for language development and you can do this with anything. So if you've got, let's say, little cards of the farm animals and then you have different examples of farm animals so that they kind of link the picture, the word, and the object, that is perfect for that hands-on learning that really motivates them to want to learn and want to interact with all of the supplies that you are presenting. So having something like this is perfect in developing those language skills. This is another beautiful example of something that you can use to promote language. So this is just like a writing board and it comes with the little pencil so that they are able to trace all of the letters so that they could learn to identify all of the letters and learn how to eventually write all of the letters. So I also like this activity and I utilize it by um, filling this little bowl with perhaps different colored beans and then they're able to put the little beans in the little crevices and then it becomes a sensory activity. So again, there's a lot of different ways that you are able to utilize something like this in order to have them engage with the material and be able to learn from it. When you guys are watching this video, it will be Monday, December 28th, and it will be my birthday. So I just want to say a very, very special thank you to all of you guys who have commented, who have liked and have subscribed. You guys have made this year so amazing for me, and I really do appreciate every single one of you. So thank you so, so much for engaging, for watching, and for again, just making this possible because I really do enjoy being able to put out videos for you guys and being able to help you in this kind of Montessori, Waldorf, homeschool journey that we are all in, um, especially because of COVID. Um, we want to make sure that our kids stay safe. So whatever I can do to help, I will do. If you guys have any more suggestions, leave them in the comments below. If you guys have questions, please go ahead and leave them down below. I will be happy to answer them for you. Again, if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to hit that like, make sure to subscribe and ring that notification bell so that you are notified of when I next post a video. And with that, I'll go ahead and leave you guys. I will see you guys very, very soon. Thank you guys so much for watching. Bye.